everyone in this video we're going to go over how to call one lambda from another lambda so this will build off our last video and go a little more advanced and this will introduce, introduce us to the boto 3 library which will be very useful later on so let's go ahead and get started so here we go into our lambda now you can also search for it in the top bar and i'm going to create a new function i'm going to call this um, we can call it my invoke lambda uh, make sure we use the runtime of python 3.11 and we're going to use arm 64 as the architecture and I'll leave the rest as it is, and we'll create that function. Okay, and now the code loads up in the console. I'm gonna go ahead and make this bigger so you can hopefully see it a little bit better. Like that. Um, okay, so we have a basic Lambda handler here with our event and our context. We went over this last time. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So we have this built in library called Photo3. So I'm gonna import it below my JSON, import Boto3. And what Boto3 is, is the AWS SDK for Python. And so it gives us various different uh, things we can use to interact with AWS in our Python code. And in this case, we wanna go ahead and invoke a Lambda with this call. So if I go back to my services, actually I'll just duplicate this tab. And then I'm gonna go ahead and go back to my functions. I have this other Lambda function sitting here called the add Lambda. And what this has here is a very simple um, lambda that just takes two numbers from the event and it adds them together and returns that total. So it just takes two numbers and adds them together. We're going to use this, this lambda here as our example for our invoke. So what I want to do is use my Boto3 library to invoke this, passing two numbers, and then hopefully we get back the, uh, the sum of the two numbers. So to do this, what I will do is I will delete all this code here and I'm going to start by uh, using the Boto3 library to get access to our Lambda. So there's a few steps we need to do. First one is create a Lambda client. Once we create a Lambda client, we want to go ahead and get our function name. We'll do from E and V variables. And we'll go over that as well. Um, and then we want to go ahead and create a payload. In this case, this will be our event. And then we want to go ahead and call, or we'll call it invoke the lambda. In this case, we want to invoke the add lambda, lambda. And then we'll return the response. So uh, the first step is to create a lambda client. And we can do that with our Boto3 library. We can do is lambda client equals Boto3.client. And then we can pass in, as an argument, in a string, lambda. From here we can get our function name. So I want to create, I want to save our function name in the environment variables. So if I went up to my configuration, down to environment variables, and I'll edit them, and I'll add a new one. And I want to add the name of this function, which is just add lambda. So I'm going to copy this name, put this as the value, and we can put some sort of key here. I'll do just lambda function name, and I will save that one environment variable now you'll see we have one environment variable lambda function name set to add lambda the name of our lambda and we can access this in our code by using the environ package um that's part of the os package i guess so we can do from os import environ and then um this gives access to our environment variables in a dictionary so we can get it how we normally would get any other uh dictionary in python so what we can do is we can do um lambda name equals environ dot get and then we pass in the key in our case the key is this right here passing this key it will return this add lambda value we'll put this key in our code right here and now we have access to our lambda name so now we have a lambda client created to invoke the lambda we have our lambda name we want to invoke next thing we do before we invoke it we need some sort of payload to pass in and in this case our payload will be the two numbers that we're going to pass into our event. So I'll go ahead and do lambda underscore payload equals. And we'll use the JSON library for this because it needs to be in JSON. Um, and I'll go ahead and create a dictionary and we'll do number one, colon three, number two, colon um, five. This should equal eight. Now in this format here, uh, this will fail and you'll see in a second why this fails 
but um, I want to go ahead and just show you this error so you know how to fix it. Um, but before we continue, also make sure both of these number keys here match what we have in our Lambda handler. In this case, the event.get, number one, number two, they match exactly what we have right over here. And uh, you can go ahead and pause the video and create this other Lambda real quick if you want to. It's very simple, and the code's right here if you want to go do that. But um, back to this Lambda, this will fail, um, but we will get to that in a second. Let's go ahead and just see what happens first. Next, let's go ahead and invoke our Lambda. So we'll set a value of response to keep our response, and then we'll do Lambda client dot invoke, and we'll pass in some different values here. So the first thing we we'll want to pass in is our function name. So we can do function name, just like that, equals our function name. In this case, we'll call it Lambda name. And the name. Uh, next, we're going to pass an invocation type. So there's two different invocation types we could set this to. We can set it to request response, and this will set it to uh, call to invoke our function synchronously, where we will wait for the response to come back. Or if we want to run this asynchronously, we can pass this in event, um, and that will allow it to run asynchronously. Uh, just note that. The client context only gets passed in for synchronous events or synchronous uh, invocations. So in this case of event, we won't have access to our client context. Um, but in our case, we're going to go ahead and set this to request and response, and we'll go ahead and make it synchronous. So we wait for the response to come back. We do request response. Next, we're going to go ahead and create our payload. So our payload is what we created above our lambda payload, and we'll pass it in right here. Okay, and that's all we need to pass in to invoke our Lambda. And now as for testing, let's go ahead and just print our response and see what we get back. Now, before we can go ahead and test it, we gotta go ahead and deploy the changes. So hit deploy right here to deploy our changes. And then we'll go ahead and test this. Um, we'll leave this as is, we'll save it. Uh, we'll give us a test name, save this. And then we will go ahead and uh, test this function. And you'll notice here, we get Parameter validation failed, invalid type for parameter payload. Value number one, three, number two, five. Class type of class dict, valid types, bytes, byte array, file like object. So what this error is saying is that we can't pass the dictionary in as a payload. Um, we need it to be um, a bytes or a byte array. So what we will need to do is, is go ahead and convert this to JSON. So we can use our import JSON uh, we have at the top here and convert this uh, payload into a JSON payload. So we can do that by doing json.dumps. And then in parentheses, we can pass in the dictionary. And also be in a JSON string, which will then work um, for our payload validation type here. Let's go ahead and deploy that change and test it out. And now we'll see we get another error here. An error occurred, access denied exception when calling the invoke operation. So when you get something like this, when calling a certain operation, that means your permissions are not set up correctly. So um, if you look at our configuration, and go to permissions. We can see we have this default role um, on this Lambda that was created when we created the Lambda. If I click on this, we can see what permissions this role has. We have this AWS basic execution role on here. We look at it, at the policy. Um, this is the policy document for the role. We can see what, it, um, what the permissions are. We are allowing create log stream and put log events. We have some logging stuff, but we can't invoke a Lambda. So our uh, function currently is not allowed to invoke a Lambda. We can add this permission pretty easily using uh, built-in permissions. So uh, to avoid getting into details on creating uh, IAM roles and stuff, to keep things simple, we're gonna add a kind of a generic uh, default role here, just so this will work for this tutorial. And we'll go in the future, um, in the future we'll go into more detail on creating IAM roles. But for now, let's go ahead and just add one role here. So um, I can go to add permissions and to attach policy. And in the search bar here, I'm going to search for AWS Lambda. Um, there's a few different things here. We have full access, which has CloudWatch, EC2, uh, KMS, IAM, all sorts of stuff. Um, one of the principles of AWS is least privileged, action, least privileged access. So we, we want to make sure we, we add the least amount of privileges needed to do what we want to do. And so if you look at these other roles here, read only, this doesn't really have anything about invoking Lambda either. Uh, let's go ahead and now look at this basic execution role. 
nothing there either. So let's go ahead and look further down here and we'll see we have this AWS Lambda role. Look at this permission here. We'll see that we have this invoke function. So now we can add just this invoke function onto our Lambda. And so what we can do here is we can select it right here and hit add permissions. Now we look at our pol uh, permission policies here. We have our default one for our logs and we have this AWS Lambda role for invoking uh, another Lambda function. Now let's go ahead and jump back to our code here. Let's go back to the code and let's run this one more time. And you'll see we got a response of null because we didn't return anything, but um, we will have some things here. Uh, we have a payload. Um, you can see we have this, this response printed out. It's not really in a pretty format. It's hard to see what we're doing. Uh, so what we need to do is um, change this to get out the actual um, payload response from our Lambda. And we can do this like this. So instead of printing the response, I'm going to print out json.loads response. And then we want to get a key of payload, which if you looked at our logs there or at our execution result, you'll see that we did have right here at the end, we did have this payload key. So we're getting this payload right here. But you look at it, it's a Boto Core response streaming body object, not exactly the form we want. So we can get the, for, the payload, and then we can do a dot read, and then we can do a dot decode of UTF 8. And now instead of printing this, I'm also going to go ahead and just return this. And that should be good. So now we're going to get that payload body, we're going to read and decode it, and then we'll return that, and let's see what we get. Look at a response, we get 8. Uh, which is great because if we look at our code again, I just realized this is small again. Let me, sorry about that. Make this bigger. Um, and so we look at our code again here. What we did is we passed in three and five. We then add them together, which we get eight. And then this return here is now returning eight. Hopefully that was helpful with learning how to invoke lambdas from another lambda. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.